do you protect against a lone wolf gunman? New details tonight on how Volusia County law enforcement was able to track down the man accused of threatening a mass shooting, what they found inside his home, and why he will not be getting out of jail anytime soon. Plus, the Kissimmee community is remembering two KPD heroes killed in the line of duty two years ago. We're hearing from the police chief and a fallen officer's wife about how much this means to them. Then, a warning for beachgoers. What police are asking you to look out for at Volusia County beaches? Hello and thank you for joining us live at 5 on Spectrum News 13. I'm Sharon Stone. Uh, those stories are coming right up. First, so certified meteorologist David Hecker joins us now live. And you were telling me some stronger storms are trying to develop. Yeah, nothing major heavy. We learned some new information tonight about the arrest of a Daytona Beach man. He is accused of making threats of conducting a mass shooting. A Volusia County judge denied him bond today and called him a danger to the public. Spectre News 13's Crystal Knowles joins us now live from the jail. And Crystal, you actually learned a lot more about this case from Sheriff Mike Chitwood. This weekend actually marks two years since two Kissimmee police officers were killed in the line of duty. Today, Kissimmee police hosted a Community Appreciation Day event. This was to honor Sergeant Sam Howard and Officer Matthew Baxter. KPD Chief Jeffrey O'Dell talked to the crowd as well as Sadia Baxter. She is the wife of one of the officers killed. It's been two years since my husband Matthew became an angel and I can say that it doesn't get easier. I have small children and every day we hit different milestones that a daddy should be here for their daughter. This is to honor Sergeant Sam Howard and Officer Matthew Baxter. They both got into this business for the right reason and it was to make um, an impact on their community. An Osceola County soccer coach is behind bars, accused of inappropriately touching a nine-year-old boy before and during practice. Authorities say 22-year-old Hugo Daniel Jimenez Rombos picked the boy up at his Orlando home, and he was taking him to a sporting goods store to buy him some knee pads before going to a soccer field. While well, the boy told detectives the coach touched his genitals over his clothing while driving to the store and then to practice. The boy also said he looked down his pants during a bridge exercise. Jimenez Rombos was arrested and charged with lewd and lascivious molestation. A $100 million lawsuit has been filed against the Jeffrey Epstein estate on behalf of two of his accusers. This lawsuit claims an unidentified recruiter lured the two women into Epstein's mansion. Both women claim they were sexually assaulted by him. Now, a lawyer for the women claims she is also speaking with other possible victims. This all comes a week after Epstein's death. That has been ruled suicide. However, Epstein's lawyers say they're not satisfied with that suicide finding. They plan to conduct their own investigation. Guards at the prison where he was held have been accused of falsifying records and failing to check on him while he was on suicide watch. Beto O'Rourke is pushing for a national gun registry in the wake of two mass shootings. The Democratic presidential candidate also wants a nationwide gun licensing system and mandatory buyback of assault-style rifles. Back in May, he said a similar proposal from fellow candidate Senator Cory Booker may be too far. Earlier this month, 22 people were killed in a mass shooting in El Paso, Texas. That is the district O'Rourke represented when he was in Congress. The Federal Communications Commission is recommending that Congress designate a three-digit number for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. The FCC recommends the use of the digits 988 because it's a shorter number that's easier to remember. Currently, calls go to a 10-digit suicide hotline number, and they are routed to the closest certified crisis center. Last year, counselors with the hotline answered more than 2.2 million calls and more than 100,000 online chats. Low-income Floridians are getting some help they really need to cool or heat their homes thanks to a low-interest nonprofit lender. The Solar and Energy Loan Fund made millions of dollars available to families who wouldn't be able to secure financing. Spectrum News 13's Dave Jordan explains for some it's been a lifeline. When the Officials are reminding you to look out for jellyfish. There were actually more than 200 stings yesterday throughout Volusia County beaches. If you look at your screen, you will see the type of jellyfish that are causing problems. Volusia Beaches tweeted that photo today, writing, flying the purple flag today, these creatures are not being very nice to our beachgoers. 
Now, experts say if you are stung by a jellyfish, get out of the water and flag down a lifeguard truck or go to a staff tower. A lifeguard can actually rinse the area with vinegar to help the pain. It's important that you do not rub the area because that can make it a lot worse. And usually the pain subsides after a few minutes. While these jellyfish sting are painful, most are not life-threatening. And at 5.11, it's time for your weather on the ones. Uh, regardless of what kind of weather you're at the beach, nothing like a jellyfish sting to ruin your day. A hospital is implementing technology to protect babies moments after they're born. Instead of the ink and paper, they're scanning the footprint. And this is a way to capture a moment of time and secure the child's safety for years to come.